Hello, hello, hello. How's it going out there at night? Whoa. Um, you stumped me now. <laughs> uh, check out our website, manimalresearch.com. Thanks to everybody. going out there. I want to welcome everybody to our first ever um, segment of Manimal Encounters. We have been uh, talking this up for a little while now. Got uh, some some encounters sent in. Some uh, some really good stuff. Um, we're going to start off the, uh, the very first uh, segment of Manimal Encounters with the very first uh, email we got. A gentleman asked me to uh, keep it you know, keep it a secret, keep his name and, and the location a secret. So that's what I am going to do. I'm going to read his encounter. And then I have one more that I will read after that. It's a couple of short encounters, but I think they, they both give uh, a good example of the differences. Uh, you know, from the most, some of the most common behavior uh, of Bigfoot to some behavior that I'm not real familiar with. Maybe, maybe you guys are uh, talking about the second story. So, so we get, we get a good uh, bridge between, between the two. And again, on that second story, um, uh, after we do it, guys comment on, uh, on the comments down there. Let me know if you have ever heard of any, any behavior like that, because, uh, it's pretty interesting, I think. But, uh, all that being said, I will stop my, uh, Yavern, whatever, and we will get into the first encounter. On April 16th, 2020, my wife, son, my nephew, my nephew's girlfriend, and I camped at a, a non-disclosed area. This was the second time that my family visited this area. On our first camping trip, we had nothing out of the ordinary happen. Although I had the feeling of being watched. So on this camping trip, I included a firearm just in case we may encounter a bear or hogs. Throughout the evening, all five people camped, camped there could hear something moving through the brush, but we all wrote it off to regular night sounds. After having dinner, my son, nephew, and I hiked off into the wilderness for a while but returned to camp after a few minutes because the darkness made it impossible to maneuver through the undergrowth. After talking by the campfire until around 1 a.m., we all called it a night and each retired to our tents and were soon asleep. <clears throat> we were asleep approximately an hour when both my wife and I were awakened by something large sniffing the tent near my wife's head. During this camping trip, we brought along our dog, a Connie Corso, a large Mastiff breed. Startled after hearing the sniffing, my wife whispered that something was right outside our tent. Grabbing my firearm, I yelled to my nephew that something was in our camp, and I unzipped the tent and stepped out. Stepped outside. At that time, I called for my dog to come with me, but she would not exit the tent. I walked around to the back side of our tent to where the sniffing originated and could only see a shadow headed off into the trees. Because I am very protective of my wife, I fired two rounds above the shadow and waited to see if whatever was out there was going to return. It did not. Since that happened, I have returned to the same area and camped, but I tried to remain awake throughout the night. My wife and I camped near the same area on October 9th and had a very frightful encounter that lasted for over five hours. I audio recorded this event that included the shaking of our tent, howls, chairs moved around, and tree knocks. This was witnessed by five people. The next morning, I took photos of footprints, tree breaks, 
and what I think is the big guy peeking at me at my wife during a photo I was taking. I still have the audio recording, but because it's so large, over five hours, I can't send it. Okay, that's what I was talking about. Um, you know, between the, the two encounters, stuff that happened in this one is it, fairly fairly common. We hear it quite a bit with, with Bigfoot uh, behavior. It, it doesn't make it any less terrifying at all. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that, that we do hear that that's behavior uh, of Bigfoot. So pretty comfortable in saying that, that it was a, a Sasquatch that they encountered that night and um whereas i don't I don't recommend shooting at things uh that you can't really see i mean that like the like the gentleman said he's protective of his wife he felt threatened and um honestly if it was a person i mean that that's a good way to get yourself shot anyway going around messing with somebody's tent in the middle of the night so I, i'm pretty comfortable in saying we could roll out that this was a human being. I, I think that they encountered a Bigfoot. <clears throat> Something else that kind of stands out, you know, that goes along with the traditional behavior, and, and we hear a lot in encounters, was the behavior of the dog. If you guys are familiar with Connie Corsos, they are, first of all, they're beautiful dogs. They really are. But they're giant dogs. They're huge. They're very intimidating, very imposing. Um... I would imagine not threatened very, not, not scared very easily. And, and for this thing to not come out of the tent, something was wrong. So, um, yeah, but we hear that all the time as well with, uh, with Bigfoot behavior. So that was the, uh, the first encounter and I appreciate the gentleman sending that in. Like I said, that was our first ever, uh, email. So, uh, all of that being said, we'll go ahead and get in to the second one. Now, this is the one that I asked you guys, if you have ever heard of a behavior like this, please, please send it in. Let me know about it so we can start talking about it because it's, it's pretty scary. And, and I'll just, I'll just go ahead and jump into it. it. Says quite a few years ago, I was camping out in the woods and had a strange experience. I am honestly asking if anyone has heard of this kind of thing with a Bigfoot. It was a car camping thing far from our city in an abandoned campsite. Nobody around for miles, <clears throat> and it was, it was windy as hell that night. We had supper, pitched the tent, and settled in for the night. I woke up a couple of times in the tent and swore I could hear heavy footsteps. But with the wind, I thought it was just my vivid imagination. But I did not sleep very well that night. In the morning, my girlfriend and I got up and prepared coffee, and she looked back and turned white. I was like, what? I turned back and looked back at the tent. Right over the back end of the tent was a tall tree. And in that tree about nine to 11 feet up directly over the tent was a freshly severed leg of a deer dripping blood onto our tent. It had been impaled onto a broken branch. It was fresh. It was a fresh, freshly bleeding kill. And the part that kind of haunts me is how far up in the tree it was. I am six feet tall and there's no way I could have gotten that limb up there without climbing the tree. But there was no way to climb that tree as it was so skinny. I'm still wondering to this day how it could have gotten there. It was not there when we got into the campsite. It had to have taken something huge. It had to have taken something with a huge reach to do that. The limb was also severed, the, the limb of the deer, was also severed and not cut, like it was ripped off the body of the deer. Has anyone ever heard of something like this with the Bigfoot? I have tried to explain this event in any logical or rational process, but needless to say, 
we packed up the car in record time and peeled out of there as fast as possible, never to go back. Yeah, guys. <clears throat> I mean, put yourself in their shoes for just a second and, and imagine going camping with your, your significant other and us, you know, we can get away, just the two of you. You go to bed in this remote place, no one around but you, and, and you wake up to the leg of a deer impaled on a tree limb directly above your tent. Blood from that deer staining your tent. That's got to be terrifying. And like I said, I've never heard uh, of an encounter like this. I'm sure that there are. I'm sure people have heard. I've heard of... of a Sasquatch reportedly sticking uh, carcasses of animals up in a tree and, and things like that. But I've never ever heard of them sticking a limb and paling the limb of an animal on a tree directly above where someone was sleeping. Was this a warning? Um, someone asked, you know, could it have been an offering? You know, I, I don't know. It, it would be purely speculation on my part. Just like, you know, unless somebody out there has seen this behavior and, and knows why they're doing it, it's going to be it's going to be speculation on their part, too. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, so really good encounter. The first encounter was really, really good as well. And, and these are two two really good examples of of, uh, of what we're looking for. You guys, like, like we say all the time on Manimal, uh, what we're trying to do and the most important thing that we can do is get the information out to people, let them make their own minds up. It's just, it's imperative that we get the right information out to people. And the best way of doing that is from those who have witnessed them themselves. So that's who we're trying to talk to by doing this. Uh, we're not really, we're not going to have researchers or anything like that on this, this, uh, this segment, Manimal Encounters, we're, we're only going to have people that have had something weird happen that they can't explain. And like I said earlier, it doesn't have to just be, have to be a Bigfoot. Like the second story it's not, the gentleman didn't even know if it was a Bigfoot that we were, that we're dealing with. I'm confident that it is, but he didn't even know. So like I was saying, it doesn't have to be strictly Bigfoot, you know, send in your dog man stuff, send in paranormal, you know, ghost stories, uh, UFO stuff like that uh that's uh i don't know I, I think this could be a good thing a fun thing and uh just another avenue of, of getting getting information out there uh, i want to remind everybody to uh not to forget about our, our weekly shows we do two live shows a week we come to you live every sunday night my buddy walls and i do we come to you every sunday night at 8 p.m as well as every Thursday night at 9 p.m. And uh, you guys know how that works. We we have a, usually have a guest on every week, and we just we've had an awesome time doing it. Been doing it for over a year now, and it's people like you guys that, that keep us going, keep us on the air, and it, it's from your support. And uh, yeah, that'll do it, guys, for this first installment. I've got other uh, emails that I can read. Going to be putting a few together, and we will have them for you later. And yeah, so be on the lookout for those. And again, guys, uh, let's see if I can put this up here. Manimal Encounters at Yahoo.com. Please send your encounters over there. Manimal, Manimal with two N's, encounters at Yahoo.com. Because we're not going to be able to keep doing this, guys, if we don't get the encounters. We're doing okay so far, but but we need more. So uh, you guys always come through for us. You're awesome, and we love you guys. So uh, y'all be safe. Take care of each other. And until next time, just uh, y'all be safe. See ya.